Okay, what I wanted to do is make a brief video. Actually, it may not even be that brief, but to give you an overview of how to do an import. And um, this this will save a lot of time if you just follow this step by step. So I'm going to run through this and actually show you not only how to do the import, but if you make a mistake with that tagging or some other errors how to go through and fix it so let's begin what I'm going to do is uh, right now I have a spreadsheet that I've gone through and I've cleaned up and uh, this is for the Boulder Creek Festival 2013 the first thing to know is that you want to always assign a lead to a lead source so let's take a, a real quick look at lead sources if you go under uh, the top menu under Infusionsoft you'll see lead generation click on that over here you're going to see lead sources. What a lead source does is when, when someone enters the system you want to be able to go who do, where did they come from? And not only that, let's say there were a hundred individuals that came in from an event. You want to assign a cost to that event and then you want to determine how many people converted from that. So you can see what, what your profit margin is. So let's say those ten people ended up resulting in um, $500 in revenue, then you would know your, your $100 was well spent. So let's take a look. I'll just go to edit lead sources here. And you can see there's a ton of lead sources. A lot of these lead sources are coming from other websites. So they're pulling in where did they come from? How did they get here? So you can see there's Boulder Creek was already set up as well as uh, People's Fair. 2011. However, the expense side was not established for those leads. So you can always go into the lead itself and take a look at uh, the information including the expense. So you can add an expense once a lead is set up. Well, how do you set up a lead? Let's go back and you can see if I go to the same place again, lead generation, you can create a lead source. Now, you can't create an expense when you're creating a lead source. You have to save it first and then go back to the, to the lead source and list, select it, go to expense, and enter an expense. Okay? So that's how you, how you take care of that. Alright, so you can see this is where you add your expenses. Anyway, you set this up, and after you do so, now you're ready to take a look at your import. Now again, uh, in your import, you should have a column that represents the name of this campaign or lead source. The reason again for that is has to do with the matching. So in addition to having, um, you probably also want to have the name of the uh, sales rep if it was an event that multiple sales reps or even one did. That way you'd be able to assign the sales rep to the person and that would be useful for tracking as well. So now we're ready to, to do the import, and we're, again, we're going to be doing the Boulder Creek Festival 2013 import. So what I'll do is I go over to Contacts, CRM Contacts, and under Contacts here, there is Import Contacts. If you want to import contact, we're not going to use any of these. We're just going to import contacts. And now we're going to select the CSV. I've cleaned up and have a um, cleaned up CSV. I'll slide it into view here of uh, the Boulder Creek Festival. And I have preview on. I'm not sure if we can get a little look here. If it shows, you can see Marcus. You can see Boulder Creek Festival as one of the columns. So we'll just do open. And we'll do next. So now it wants you to match. So we're going to match uh, the first name, match the last name, email address, email, phone number, the sales rep, this is a custom field down here at the bottom, and then the event, which is the lead source right there. Click next. this into view. So it's asking who do you want to match. Uh, if there were multiple sales reps it would want to make sure that they match correctly. 
and uh, this back. We plan on marketing. Yes, we do. This is a this is a really important page because what happens is Infusionsoft validates that you can market to these people. So this is this is how you how you take care of that. So you say yes. How did you how did you find them up? How did you sign up these individuals? They attended an event and please do not select that it was a contest, select that they signed up for it. Okay. They're gonna say oftentimes people sign up with false information. You want to make sure they have the right information, not a problem. That's the this is the one that we want to sign up for all live events, and the reason is they go through and they validate this information to some degree. We don't use any third party providers for sending uh, lists through. We do single opt in. And since this is a new list, how long have you been? It, well, it's not less than a year. It's, it's been less than a year. We haven't we haven't emailed them ever, and it's just started building this list. Last time I sent it to him, less than a month because it hasn't been sent yet. And um, what we can say is um, we uh, do events. Individuals sign up at booth for our newsletter. We uh, give away water at events and, and prospects sign up at booth for our newsletter. You can write this down for any events. Tell us how, how okay, how many, how many emails I missed that. So how many emails per month please contact yet? Probably between one and five. So it goes through and it gives you some examples so that you can assure that matching is taking place correctly. You can see Chris Tran, lead source, email, phone number, sales rep. You can go ahead and scroll through these. These should all be good because they're all in the same column you can see there are some where we don't have last name. So now what I'm gonna do is show you how see how it says run some other actions. We're gonna go ahead and select that and take a look here at what you can do. What you can do is you can actually tag here. See add apply it and remove a tag. So what we want to do is we want to add a tag for this event. There it is. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave off tagging a tag that I know I want. So normally what you would do is hold down the control key and also select this new and apply the new lead tag. Every new lead should be applied the new lead tag. So I'm going to take this off because that's the new lead tag is what um, forces them to the drip marketing system. So I'm going to leave that off and show you how to do that. Let's say you made a mistake, how to do that afterwards. So we're going to go ahead and save that, and we're going to save done, and it's going to go ahead and run, and I think there were about 300, a little over 300 leads for that event, yep, 313. So once this is done, just take a moment more, we're going to then go ahead and see the results. And once we see the results, we're going to go ahead and... Um, add that second tag, that lead tag, which will kick off the uh, drip marketing campaign. It's about halfway done. Let's take a moment more. And obviously, depending on the size of the list, determines how long this is going to take to run. A shorter list will be quite fast. A long list with a lot of fields is also going to take longer. So we can go, now we went, oh no, I forgot to tag these guys. But what you can do is you can view the list of the contacts you just imported. So it's going to show that 313. There they are. And since they're all selected, you can see they're selected here. They're all selected. If I deselect that, that that top button it would deselect them all. I want them all selected. It says 1 through 20 of 313. 
So if I even go over to page three, they're still selected. You see that? Because of this top item. So the action that I want to do is I want to apply a tag. And the tag that I want to apply, we already applied the tag for the event. I now want to tag, apply the new lead tag, the prospect tag, new lead. And go ahead and save and process. Now it's going to come up and give me a processing screen and will show me that the 313 it's going to go ahead oh, look, they give us some uh, information here. Yeah, it tells us how many are being applied to tag. You can see it's running through. And it finished and there it is successful. Applied to tag and it tells you um, how it did. So none skip, none error, no errors, that's good. They're all applied. Now what we're going to do really quick here, and I'm going to wrap this up since this is under a 15 minute video. I'm going to go over here to um, the campaign, campaign builder and just show you a little bit of the campaign builder. You can see there were over 300 imported from one campaign, uh, over 140 from another, so that's where we get our 460. I'm going to go into the drip now. Take a look. This is this is really great. I'm going to shrink this, move, move this around a little bit so you can see the campaign. So this is the campaign. So look at this: 313 here, 147 here. It tells you exactly where they are. Now you can even click on this little icon here, and it'll show you a list of the individuals that are in that campaign in this stage. And what's going to happen is if we go ahead and click on edit here, it switches the view from performance to edit. And we went into the campaign. You can see the campaign just sends an email. So in a couple of hours, because every two hours, it'll move through and do the thank you for visiting and then move on to the next step in the campaign. So if I go back to the campaign, the next step in the campaign is the generic drip. Now, what's going to happen is if you want to dump anyone out of this campaign, what you would do is you'd merely go to the form and fill it out. And you just fill out their, their first name, last name, email address that will dump them out. That's what you do when they become a customer. If someone opts out, the system will automatically take care of that in email because at the bottom of each email is the ability for the individual to opt out. So if they opt out, they're gone they'll automatically stop receiving everything. So hopefully this was helpful. Uh, sort of was a quick run through. If you have any questions, you can always contact me, uh, kshane at getinspiredcommunications.com. Thanks.